Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. In this video, I am going to solve the warehouse location problem using IBM iLog OPLC Plex Studio. So I model this problem as an integer linear programming model. And once we solve this integer linear programming model, we will also discuss how we can find out how much time the CPLEX has taken to solve this problem. So that means how we can find out the computational time. Uh, then we will also discuss how we can convert this integer linear programming problem into the linear programming problem. In other words, we can say that how we can find out the linear programming relaxation solution. So first of all, uh, we are going to solve this warehouse location problem. So the model I am going to use is this one where we want to minimize the total cost. The first one is a fixed cost, another one is a supply cost. The fixed cost where OW is a binary variable that is indicating should we open a particular warehouse or not. So against that we have a fixed cost. Then we have a supply cost if we are using a warehouse W to ship uh, to the store S. So this is the total objective function. So we have the fixed cost as well as the supply cost. So we want to minimize this one subject to we can assign one warehouse to the multiple stores okay so uh, that is our first constraint that means only one warehouse can be assigned to the multiple store but uh, the second constraint is that is uh, if that particular warehouse is open then we can supply from that particular warehouse only the third constraint is basically the capacity constraint of that particular warehouse. So we are going to implement this math model into the OPL. So how we can do that? So we will start with the indices. So index we have the W and S that is basically indicating the stores. So w is indicating the warehouse. So I have defined a string type of warehouse index. Okay, that is a set of warehouses uh, set which is a string type. Okay, and we have the five warehouses. So we define over here. Then we have the uh, uh, stores. We have total 10 number of stores. So we have indicating uh, int number of stores. And then we are indicating the range should we start from zero. So due to zero, so that's why I'm doing minus one. If you want to start from one, so then there is no need to write minus one. Okay, so we have a stores and how many stores we have that is 10 number of stores we have okay the next thing we are indicating the the data which we have available so the first first data we have available which is a fixed cost uh, we also have the per unit supply cost we have the capacity okay so in order to define that particular data fixed cost how much fixed cost we have to bear uh, when we open that particular warehouse which is 30 Okay, then we have a capacity against each warehouse. So we have mentioned uh, the capacity against each warehouse using a one dimensional array. So then we have the two dimensional array to define the supply cost. That means if we are shipping from a warehouse one to store one, how much cost we have to bear. So we have indicated over here where uh, each row is basically indicating the store that is store number one store number two store number three store number four and so on and each column is indicating the particular warehouse so you can say that from warehouse bond to store one how much supply cost we are going to bear so this is how we define the data in a two-dimensional array so once we have defined the data we have defined the indices the next thing we are going to do is we are going to define the decision variable. So that is D bar, which is basically a binary variable. So that's why we are indicating Boolean open warehouse. And again, the second variable is also a binary variable. That's why we are writing down D bar Boolean supply variable. So we have defined the two types of decision variable. Next, we are going to define the objective function fixed cost as well as a supply cost. So we want to minimize fixed cost plus supply cost. So this is how we are going to define using some function. Okay, next we are defining the constraints. The first constraint is that is uh, from one warehouse we can supply to the multiple stores. Okay, or in others as you can say, each store has uh, one warehouse, right? 
So that is the first constraint. The second constraint is if the warehouse is open, then we can supply from that particular warehouse. That is um, the second set of constraint, which is this one. Okay, so that's what we are doing for all W in warehouse as in stores. Then the third constraint is for all W in warehouse, that is the sum with respect to the uh, S, which is in store, the supply must be less than or equal to the capacity of the warehouse. So this is how we can model this uh, math model, that is this math model into the OPL. Now we are going to solve this. So I am going to solve this math model from the main block. So how we can use the main block, as you know that we have discussed in the previous video, in a main block, uh, that is used to control the flow of uh, solving the OPL model. So how it is controlling when we are writing down main uh, block in the OPL model file. So OPL always start reading the model from the main block. That is we are first of all writing down this OPL model which is basically a script variable. So when we are saying this OPL model that means whatever the code over written here that is under the OPL model then generate. So when we are calling the generate that is basically creating the test instance or you can say creating the problem against this math model using this particular data set. Okay, so we have created the test instance. Then we are saying use the CPLEX engine to solve this math model. Then we are writing down, uh, so right now I am freezing this one so there is no need right now. Now we are going to write down the objective function. So that means, so this statement would be written as it is in the script tab when we solve this problem. So we are saying we want to write down the answer of the objective function. So you can write down cplex, then when you may right click on the dot, so you will get the list of the function. So over here you can check the get objective function that is over here. So I have already written that one that is get objective value. So it will show the show us the objective function value. Then I am saying write this OPL model again a keyword that means from this model write down the print solution which means all the decision variables answer as well as objective function answer. So write down that answer over here in the script block. As well as I am writing down the computational time. So how you can write down uh, the computational time that is cplex dot get cplex time. Again, right now remember that I want the computational time of the CPU. So in OPL there is option. So either you can write down the computational time wall time or the CPU time. So most often uh, the reporting time in the uh, research papers. Uh, we are reporting the CPU time. So how you can do that? So for that you need to add the setting file in your project. So how you can do that? You can right click new and then click on setting and then you can select the project in which you want to add the setting file and write down the name and then after writing down the name you can click finish. So it will add. So I have already added that one. So if I double click over here, so under the math programming, under the general tab, you can see the computation time reporting. So there is a uh, three types. So I am writing down uh, by default it is wall clock time. So I want to check the CPU time. So click over here, back to this one. So I am saving it. Okay. So now we have uh, the objective function. We have we want to see the print as well as the computation time. Now. I want to solve this problem. So we need to drag and drop the model file, the setting file, as well as the data file in the configuration. Right click, run this model. So once you run this model, you can see from the script, so right now it is right now solving this problem. So in a script uh, tab, you can see that, so we have the total objective function cost, which is 383. So we have the answers as well as the computational time. So right now this is indicating the CPU computational time in seconds. Um, right now this is an integer linear programming which we have solved. Okay. And uh, the answer they have given us that is we should open warehouse number one, two, three, 
uh, as well as five. So there is no need to open warehouse number four. And uh, from warehouse one, we should, uh, sorry, from warehouse five, we should uh, ship to the store one. From warehouse uh, two, um, that is that that is a warehouse two to store two. Similarly, from warehouse five to store three. From warehouse five to store that is I think so five and so on. So this is the answer we are getting. Similarly, if you go to the engine log, you can see the best bound as well as the best integer solution because uh, maybe they have applied the branch and bound or the cutting plane methods. So they are giving us the best integer solution with respect to the uh, iterations. So this is the best possible integer programming solution is available. So this is also indicating that duality gap percentage. In a st statistics tab, as we have discussed um, in our previous video that this will uh, show us the progress chart if we haven't used the main block okay due to the main block it is not showing us any uh, progress chart over here but uh, in a script log we can see the objective function solution okay that is optimum as well as the uh, our decision variables answer we have also written as the computational time now let's convert this integer programming problem into the linear programming problem that is how we can find out this integer programming problems, linear programming relaxation solution. So for that, as we have discussed in previous video as well, so how we can convert all the integer variables into the linear, that is again this OPL model, which is this one, which we have written down, dot convert all integer variables function. So it will convert all the integer into the, uh, um, you can say, so after uh, writing down this statement, now again, uh, I'm also writing down that relax model answer. So run this model again, okay? Remember this computational time was 4.8125. So let's see the answer. So now this is the answer of the linear programming problem. So let me run again. So the computational time, as you know that right now this is very small problem so you may not get the exact idea but when we are solving a large integer programming problem as you know that cplex will take more time compared to the linear programming problem so you can also compare the computational time for that so right now as you can see that in a script log because we have converted all the integer variables into the linear or you can say continuous variable so they are giving us the uh, um, you can say message that all the integer variable now converted into the float and after converting into the float they have given us the answer although right now answers are in zero one but you can see from the objective function that was earlier it was three eight four right now it is three seven six as you know that in a minimization case linear programming problem is always provide us the lower bound of the integer programming problem answer. So I hope you understand how you can convert the linear programming problem in uh, the integer uh, programming problem into the linear programming problem and how to solve it. Thank you so much.